The Epilepsy Foundation acknowledges the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation as the traditional owners of the land on which this property stands. We respectfully recognise Elders both past and present. Hi, my name's Scarlett Page. I work in early childhood in kindergarten. I've had epilepsy for 12 years now um, and I advocate for the needs and rights of people with epilepsy and to get epilepsy respected. Well, originally, I was really ecstatic with the diagnosis, like over the moon, because I'd gone six months misdiagnosed and that was the worst six months of my life. I don't actually remember being diagnosed with epilepsy um, due to the amount of seizures I was having, both complex partial and um, nocturnal tonic clonics. Um, Mark Cook was in Tasmania at the time. He used to fly down to Tassie um, and he diagnosed me apparently. Um, and yeah, I was ecstatic with that diagnosis. And then that turned to depression rather quickly because I wanted to go to America and be an au pair. And that, you know, got squashed very quickly. Um, then the Epilepsy Tasmania put us in contact with the support groups and my one-on-one -on -one, um, peer support. And then just very quickly I learnt either let this, and my family as well, they thought let this consume her and wrap her in cotton wool or let her continue her life as she wants to. So I got had neurosurgery two years after I was diagnosed and then the year after neurosurgery I turned 21 and I thought bugger this I've always wanted to go to America so I went over on a camping trip around the east coast of the states and then every year since then I've been back to the US and multiple times you know different places around the world as well basically my family just thought no nah, we're not going to hold her back um, and I've had seizures around the world and, you know, got travel insurance and been to hospital. It would be no different if I had a seizure here and went to hospital. Um, I live on my own. I don't live with my family here in Victoria. My family's in Tasmania. So, yeah. I became a volunteer with the foundation after the foundation um, gave me so much when I was in need. Um, and then I joined up as a volunteer on camps and weekend getaways. After that, I became an ambassador for the Epilepsy Foundation. Recently, I went over to Bangkok where I was awarded the Golden Light um, Advocate for the Western Pacific region, um, where I shared my story along with seven others from around the world in the age bracket of 18 to 35, where we all shared our story of how we've turned our epilepsy story into a positive light for others. When I was in Bangkok with the Golden Light Award, hearing some of the stories that people um, encounter from Africa, from Uganda and from Indonesia, I thought we were very lucky here in Australia, whereas I know people here in Australia aren't very fortunate, but hearing the stories that other people have had, we're a thousand times luckier than other countries. My personal strategies for building self-confidence are basically just to stay positive, um, do things that I really enjoy, take time out for myself, um, enjoy listening to music and then with that I am able to keep focused for myself and have time to relax and then I'm able to put that into a positive way to help others. That's the strategy for stress relief. And when um, I've been in hospital, when I have my neurosurgery, I'd have on my Dolly Parton and that would help, um, you know, with my stress relief, just listening to something that's important to me and taking the focus off the epilepsy and putting it back onto something positive. And, yeah, and then I think that's important for other people as well to have something to take their mind off the epilepsy um, and have it in a positive way form. With my stress relief, I also see um, Patrick O'Brien at St Vincent's Hospital and he's um, worked with me to be able to put these strategies in place um, and he's given me permission to allow myself not to be stressed. Whereas when, like it's hard to explain when someone else gives you permission, like you don't really need permission to be not be stressed and have this and then when someone says it is okay you know you are okay to be able to be stressed and then here are some strategies to put this in place um, 
I always knew like my music was really good for me but you know being able to get out and you know just even go and sit in the museum at, there's a rainforest part at the museum and I just go and sit there after appointments in St Vincent's and that's always a good relaxing thing for me to do. I persisted because of Mark Cook, my neurologist. I have a lot of faith in him and what, you know, what he says. Um, and he thought that that was really good. So, yeah, I just persisted, did what he said, basically, because everything else he said worked, controlled my seizures and stuff. So my um, role with peer support groups has been amazing. Um, when I was first diagnosed in Tasmania, um, the Epilepsy Foundation used to set you up a meeting with one-on-one, someone your age, before you went to the support groups. And that was amazing. I've met um, one of my dearest, closest friends through that. And then she'd take me to the support group, my family, um, we'd go along. And then once I moved to Melbourne, um, I continued as a participant in support groups and just being able to be around people with epilepsy who understand it, where epilepsy is normalised, where it's not, you know, a demon thing where we can just be out enjoying yourselves. And then being a um, leader of the support group, being able to help people when they're having a seizure, being able to just let people relax and feel respected and, you know, and it's amazing to the wider community how much support people have for you. Like we've had people have seizures in cafes, in restaurants, and people who work there have actually managed to say, oh, do you need any help? We'll turn the lighting down. We'll, you know, turn the music off, you know, not make a big fuss of it, but make sure the person's all right. And then when they come back out of the seizure, you know, things are fine. And, you know, if that person needs to go home, they can go home or if they want to continue in the group, they can. I've gotten so much out of both being a participant and being a volunteer um, leader as well. It's, um, and it's opened my eyes up to see other people who don't have epilepsy, who volunteer and have been a constant volunteer for a really long time, just being able to support and be around and make a difference for people with epilepsy. I was 18 when I was diagnosed with epilepsy and I think for children who have to grow up with epilepsy, it must be really difficult for them being in school, having to explain, you know, explain themselves when they don't really need to, but being able to make epilepsy normal for them, you know, where they can feel comfortable just bringing up in a conversation or children are very understanding when you talk to them at a young age if you know someone's in their class and you know they have a seizure and if it's been spoken about then they the classmates won't you know react in a way that's confronting negative way you know it's important for children for anyone to share their experiences and what they're going through and see that other people have been through the same thing and that you know they're not alone I've always been able to get a job um, by being upfront and honest about having epilepsy and how my seizures affect me um, when they are. Um, Thank goodness I haven't had any for a very long time, Um, but I'm always upfront and honest and say, this is why I can only work short hours. Um, Recently, although in saying that, I did have a incident at work where someone just didn't want to have a bar of epilepsy. They were very I don't know, frightened of it. I don't know if that's through a personal experience they've had with epilepsy, but they were very frightened by the fact that someone had epilepsy and was at work. So yeah, that was um, that was quite confronting for me because I haven't ever had that before because I can only work short hours. Yeah. So I only, you know, people often say, oh, why is that? We want you, you know, for a longer role or something. And I just say, oh, I've got a medical condition. And like, oh, okay, and... You know, people don't often ask what it is, but I say, you know, it's epilepsy, what I've got, my medical condition. I don't want to work somewhere if they're not willing to, you know, accept me for who I am. They've seen, you know, my resumes and things about me and how well I work. And um, if they're not willing to say, yes, we want someone with a medical condition and I mean epilepsy is so common like surely 
there are other people who have epilepsy that they've come across, not only at work, but in their personal life. And I'm sure they'd be mortified if someone didn't, that they loved and cared for didn't get a job because of epilepsy. But I wear this, my golden light pin and my epilepsy pin on my lanyard for work. Um, Everyone at my job knows, um, well, not a couple of new people, but everyone at my job knows that I just recently went over to Thailand for the golden light. And I'm proud. You know, I've met parents at work through me saying that I've got epilepsy. I tell the children I've got epilepsy. Some of them go home and tell their families. And then, you know, I've had parents come and say, I've got epilepsy too, you know, and it's amazing. It's built that community at work of, you know, myself and parents, families who've got epilepsy and it's made them feel, you know, more comfortable as well because, you know, if it's genetic epilepsy, then their children might be able to grow up and get a job and, you know, um, which is amazing. We're no different. Just because we have epilepsy doesn't mean they're any different from anybody. Um, I always say anyone with a brain can have a seizure at any time. Just because I've got epilepsy doesn't mean that you won't have epilepsy in half an hour, you know, an hour or tomorrow. You know, just be a little bit more understanding of the condition Um, and just try and make people feel that they're not different. That In one way, I kind of get a bit frustrated when people say, oh, you are different. I'm like, well, no, I'm not any different to anyone else and they're like oh yeah but you've got you know a disability and I think well yeah okay I might do but I'm not different to anyone like if you want epilepsy to be included you've got to make that stand and say no I'm not different from you I'm the same as you yes my brain might you know be different for 10 minutes you know five minutes or whatever but the majority of the time I'm the same as anyone else I'm proud to say that I've got epilepsy, if that makes... I don't know if that makes sense. Um, It's made me stronger. It's made me um, be more empathetic, I think. And if people were able to communicate, you know, in a positive way at the moment with Purple Month for Purple Day coming up, I'm sharing facts on Facebook about epilepsy and about how, you know one in 26 people can have a seizure and, no, you know, anyone with a brain can have it and how common it is, you know, people can hold a job, people can get a driver's licence and you may not be well enough to do, you know, to drive or to get a job but in that half a day where you are well, go and have a coffee. Don't sit around and wait for your next seizure, you know, go and do something in that half an hour where you're we- while you're well, you know, get out and be part of the world, you know, because if you sit at home and waiting for your next seizure, then you're not living <laughs> like you can, you know, even if it's five minutes and you can go for a walk or you can get out of bed for 10 minutes a day, whereas, you know, the rest of the time you're, you know, seizures and exhausted, just do live while you can live, you know, it doesn't have to be like myself, you know, travelling all around the world and advocating and stuff, you know, it can just be those simple, small things that are huge for you. Just be proud of who you are. Um, Epilepsy is not what you are. Um, You are what you make yourself.